Amen. Well, I thought before we uh, got into the Word this morning, um, it would be appropriate to uh, do a little bit of a prophecy update. And as I mentioned before, you know, it's one thing to get up every week and say, time is short, but it's nice to provide some evidence. And if you uh, follow the news, it, not the lamestream, I mean the mainstream media, but the, you know, the uh, uh, online or whatever, you, you see all kinds of things that are happening that are just amazing and they don't talk about in the uh, corporate media. But um, one of the things that's happening, um, uh, well, I, I'll just, I'll share one quick uh, uh, thing before we get into the prophecy update. Um, this Wednesday, we're going to have kind of a, a look into prophecy. We know that the, the Bible prophesies of the Jewish people rebuilding a temple in Jerusalem. And there's actually some differences of opinion about where the other temples actually were built. Were they built, both built on the Temple Mount? And seems like yes, but some would challenge that. And it's kind of interesting uh, discussion, but anyway, uh, we're going to kind of look at that on Wednesday night and kind of have a little uh, talk story about it as well. But I think it's some interesting stuff about um, you know the temple location and and what that uh, what the implications of that are or could be for um, some end times prophecies being fulfilled very soon. But um, uh, so getting into the the time is short prophecy update this morning. Um, it seems the uh, United Nations, our big brother, is uh, making a real, has just made a real power grab. And over the years, there's been um, a lot of people that follow prophecy, a lot of Christians that follow prophecy that have figured that the United Nations, as far as a globalist, you know, one world government entity, that they're going to kind of fade off the scene because they're they're inefficient, they're, you know... And corrupt there, which won't stop them from being globalist. But, you know, they're inefficient and they're uh, expensive and they're just um, not real powerful on the world scene. Well, it seems that now there may be a fresh wind of, I won't call it fire, it'll, eventually it'll be fire, but um, a fresh wind into the UN. They, uh, some interesting things have happened in these last, uh, this, this last couple of weeks, a few weeks ago. Um, first, I'll start with a scripture in Daniel chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. Uh, the prophet Daniel, we know he writes of several places in Daniel of end times of, or of, of empires, world controlling empires. And the last one um, he's talking about here in Daniel 7, he said, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. Uh, he'd seen four beasts. Uh, the fourth one, the last one, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. So prophecy students know this, the ten horns, and one gets plucked out by another one, and that one is the Antichrist, who the ten leaders and kings, and this one rises up, and he ends up taking over. So there's already this empire. It's already existing. And then one horn rises up. He's not going to form, the Antichrist is not going to form a one world government. He's going to take over a one world government. It's going to already be in place. And so we may get, well, we're already seeing some of that. But anyway, so it's interesting as far as the, the global government. Um, uh, again, people have thought the UN may drop off the scene, uh, but it looks like things are changing. Uh, last week, I, I mentioned at the UN, at the UN, um, jo Joseph Biden had his last speech for the UN uh, of his term, and he mentioned that the uh, UN should be more powerful. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd share exactly what he said. He stated the United States, the G7. Um, the, our part, and our partners have embarked on an ambitious initiative to mobilize and deliver significant financing to developing world. Nothing like a little money pouring out to get control. We are working to help countries build, and he went on, their digital transformation. It's called the Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment. 
And a key to, quote, digital transformation of the planet is a digital ID. It's, a, it's identification. It's essential to their plan. And I understand Delta Airlines has now added a digital ID. If you want to get your digital ID, you can be one of the first and go on. That. But anyway, I don't think I'm going to sign up, but whatever. You know, it's not the mark of the beast, but it's, you know, it's a step, you know, step in the right direction or in the wrong direction. But uh, so Biden continued, he said, in order to do that, this digital transformation, we must build a stronger more effective and more inclusive, of course, inclusive, United Nations. That was on September 24th. And so they had this, um, these meetings that went on with uh, quite a few of the countries, 170 or something were involved. Leaders were involved in forming, working on this, um, this agreement, and it's called the UN Pact for the Future. And I don't know exactly how it works with a pact. Like, it, um, my understanding is that when you have a treaty, if the U.S. makes a treaty, that that supersedes the Constitution. So all our laws are second. You know, gun control, well, if we have a treaty with the U.N. that says nobody can have a gun, well, then we get rid of our guns. I mean, that's my... I'm, I'll probably have eight people come up. No, that's not the way it works. But anyway, that was my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong in that. But last, was years ago, I'd heard that, that treaties supersede our Constitution. But that's a dangerous thing. But this is a, a pact here um, adopted at the UN. And uh, it's called the UN Pact for the Future. And September 22nd, they adopted a 66-page document with 56 action points. And it's interesting, the deliberations for this pact took about, you know, in the back rooms, they kind of worked on all this stuff. And then they brought it to the General Assembly of the United Nations. And um, they presented it for about five minutes. And they had a, uh, the process that they used uh, to vote on it, what's called the silence procedure. So the, the person, the leader, puts it out there and says, this is what we want to do. Any objections? No? Okay, it's adopted. And it just sweeps right through. So a lot of us are familiar with the World Health Organization, which is part of the UN. The World Health Organization was trying to make um, these, you know, initiatives that would basically get control of our health industry and possibly take control of people in this country. Well, there was a lot of, a, a fair amount of pushback to that. So the UN just went right around the, the court and said, no, no, we're just going to take over everything. It's amazing what's in this pact. It gives them power. They can declare an emergency and they, they get dictatorial powers. And um, so this, this, uh, with this silence procedure, and there was no outcry, so it automatically passed, so it was adopted. And the PAC moves towards uh, turning the anti-Semitic International Court of Justice into a global Supreme Court. The PAC introduces international taxes. Don't we all want to pay taxes to run the UN? Um, it it uh, strengthens international laws to override national laws, including freedom of speech. Uh, they want to control disinformation and um, anyone speaking out against the UN, for example, could be uh, charged with hate speech and, you know, deplatformed and who knows about possibly being arrested or something. But it's a um, pretty serious power grab when you look at all the things and it's a, you look at the things and it's all the statements in there about we are committed to, you know, we will fulfill our obligations to do this to the UN to do and all these countries, all 193 countries besides the state of Palestine and the, the Vatican, those are the only other two, uh, they call countries, but they're considered. But um, the 193 countries in the world all ratified it by not saying no. It's, it's in force now. And it's, it's a full-on power grab by the UN. And so it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's heavy duty. And, um, you know, so what, what uh, if they decide, you know, what a, a, there's a national or an international emergency, uh, what would that look like if, before they grab hold of all the governments of the world and control them? Well, it could be a, a pandemic, could be a cyber attack, a, a EMP, electromagnetic pulse strike, an event in space. It could be a, a climate event. And it's interesting that at uh, the last speech of Joe Biden's at uh, the U.N., he said that we are now in a climate crisis. So he's already declared there is a climate crisis. I mean, the UN could just with a stroke of a pen say, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's an emergency. 
We're locking down. I mean, it, <laughs> and, and you could read the, the pact. I, I don't want to be sensational, uh, but definitely people that follow it are blowing the horn and saying, this is, this is intense. So these uh, commitments by, and I, I think on the, one of the screens, that, oh, wait, this screen has, it's good. I like the, uh, uh, the UN's pact for the future translated from the globalese. And, you know, their globalese, what, how they word it is sustainable agri-food system. You know, and then translate into English, eat the bugs, you know. It's like, <laughs> you're going to own nothing, you're going to be happy, you're going to eat bugs instead of burritos. Actually, they'll be bug burritos, I don't know. But anyway, I'm sure they've got some recipes already planned for us. But yeah, they've already, they've already got stuff in stores, right? Little snacks and stuff and made out of crickets and it's like... See what they see. They care for us. You know they're going to take care of us. No more top sirloin for you. You get bugs, crickets, mealworms. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> what did you learn at church today? Uh, nothing. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But anyway, so the the, the power. My understanding is the power would transfer if there was a international emergency. Would transfer to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres who, by the way, is a Marxist. And uh, so every member nation must abide by the dictates. According to the pact, they're all going to abide by the dictates of the UN. So it's, um, what can we do? You go, oh, great, I'm depressed, Strat, you know. <laughs> but uh, what can we do? Number one is pray. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And we know that God uh, would often, uh, or a number of times, he confounded the enemies of his people. He confused them. The armies fought each other. And we can, I don't think it's unbiblical to pray for that and say, Lord, just have these people just start fighting and not figuring things out and, you know, just cause mayhem. I mean, he can, you know, he can do that. Um, you know, the one thing that, that could be good for our country or for the whole thing is if our country was to step out of the UN or to defund, we'd give a lot of money to the UN. And if we stepped out of the UN, um, that could go a long way towards delivering us from these mandates of the UN. There are actually two bills, one in the House and one in the Senate right now. They're called the Defund Act, both bills. And if you think it may bear fruit. You could call our representatives and senators, but, um, uh, but definitely keep it in prayer. And, you know, the Bible says there's going to be a one world government, you know? Um, yes. Does that mean we just all roll over and play dead? You know, no, we want to stand in the gap. We want to pray. And if he calls us to be involved in whatever areas, you know, politically spreading the word, getting involved in government, whatever he leads us to do, that's what we want to do. And um, just as a side note, um, Donald Trump is in favor in the past of, of uh, defunding the U.S. and um, possibly getting out of it, from what I understand. It uh, just so happens that the, the Biden and, and uh, Harris camp uh, have been involved in writing some of the documentation, so I don't think they're going to want to jump out of it. Uh, but anyway, you may know uh, Kamala Harris's father was a Marxist professor, and uh, I guess Kamala, from what I read and understand, she is a, a definitely socialist, and many would say Marxist as well. But you know, she talks about equity versus equality. You know what? Equity means everybody gets the same thing. And equality means we all have equal opportunities and, you know, people define it somewhat differently. But the idea of equity, so uh, Elon Musk is going to make the same take-home pay as someone that works part-time at McDonald's because that's equitable. Everybody should have the same thing. Why should have the person at McDonald's get less than Elon Musk? You know, that's, yeah, so it's, yeah, some people have a problem with, with socialism, you know, like, I think we all do. But anyway, um, but uh, so we definitely want to keep this in prayer and, and uh, God's will. God's on the throne. We don't need to be depressed. You know, the, the more if, if, if indeed it looks like, you know, the global government is marching in, if indeed it, it just storms through the doors, it's like, okay, Lord. You know, take us up, you know, <laughs> and we're going home. We're going to a better place. It's going to be awesome. And I like, you know, I like Eric's, you know, the rapture drill. You know, I was saying, oh, yeah, rapture drill, get ready. You know, but he was like, no, it's, you know, yeah, like Superman, you know. <laughs> we're just gonna... <laughs> Anyway, but, um, you know, speaking of end time events, Jesus said, um, and particularly he's talking to the Jews about the tribulation period. But I think this, I, I don't think it's a problem to take this to us as well. In Luke 21, 28, he said, now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. 
When the Jewish people see the, the seven-year tribulation start, they can look up and know the redemption draws near. But for us as believers, when we see this global government just storming down the doors, it's like, okay, <laughs> we can look up and know our redemption draws near. God's plans are good, and, and to me, it's, it's uh, something to definitely pray for and want to stand in the gap, but um, I'm, I, I hope you don't get bothered. I'm excited. It's like, <laughs> it means we're going home. It means the rapture is that much sooner. It's like, you know, we don't want to roll over and play dead, but, but um, yeah, he's going to come back, so hallelujah.